last week. They uh, had hoped to have a, a notice out, a notice of funding out in August, but the process has been delayed. They wouldn't say why it was delayed, but they hope to have notice go out in. Uh, are you still there? Yeah, we're here. Okay, I heard a beep. They hope to have the notice go out in September uh, for for a new round of uh, grants. Uh, they would not say how much they're going to make available for that round, um, but uh, we'll keep an eye out for that and let you know about that right away. So if it's something you want to apply for, we can get you the information and help you with that process. Uh, I also sent Brad a, I, don't, I was unclear in the discussion with the board if you all wanted to amend your federal strategy to include a new item on uh, no low funding. Uh, you may recall that MAP 21, when they did away with the competitive bus program, they also, uh, there was no funding specific set aside for no low emission bus grants. And so the Senate Drive Act that they approved in July actually reestablishes the no low set aside, the no, set aside for no low emission bus grants starting in fiscal year 17 at about $55 million a year for the last five years of the uh, Drive Act. So there would be a specific $55 million a year competition, and that doesn't start again until 17, the second year of the six-year six program. So it's, it's something to keep in mind going forward. There will be opportunities, potentially, depending on what the House does, to compete for, for uh, electric bus grants or no-low emission bus grants. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind there is that the Senate also reestablished a competitive bus program at a range of about $180 million a year, but they take the $55 million NOLO emission bus grant funding out of that. So it reduces the pot of money available for NOLO uh, for other buses that are, in the no, that are not in the NOLO category. So, um, you know, it's good news, bad news sort of thing. So I drafted up for Brad. I don't know if you circulated it, Brad, or not. Uh, an item, if you want to discuss it, whether you want to include that as a, another item on your federal agenda or not, is for PSTA to take a position in support of the Senate effort to create a no-low emission bus grant program. Uh, that's something, if you all want to talk about that. Well, certainly we can talk about it. Um, so what you're describing is that the current uh, uh, the current funding that has been delayed, but that uh, Federal Transit Administration is likely to issue in September, was either from old uh, prior year authorizations or um, other monies, but not not con congressionally uh, designated. And now the Senate has a uh, designated uh, designation for a no low pot of funding, but the House. Does not? Well, the House doesn't have a bill yet, so they don't have they don't have a position on that yet. So the House, when the, when the Congress re we had our conversation with Congressman Jolly in August, uh, when the House reconvenes here in September, they're going to start drafting up their version of the Senate Drive Act. And one of the issues that's in your federal agenda is whether they reconstitute the, the competitive bus grant program or not. The Senate has. The House hasn't taken a position yet, and then the other the other issue is whether they set up the uh, the no low emission grant set aside. The yeah. Senate has uh, the House has no position on that yet. So those are two issues that obviously you want to talk to the delegation about. And and the money that we were talking about, the, the competitive program that may be uh, noticed in September, is actually using fiscal year current year fiscal funds. Even though they eliminated the NOLO and the competitive bus grant programs in the MAP 21, uh, they, Congress did allow the FTA to use its existing funding if they wanted to set aside funds and have a competition for competitive grant, bus grants and for uh, NOLO uh, grants. So that's where they get the money for that. That's why we don't know how much it will be because it wasn't specific set aside by the Congress. The FTA will have to decide how much they want to put out the competition. Okay, well, I, w uh, I guess I would recommend, to, based on what uh, Harry just said, I would, uh, I guess I've just learned, and since um, it, it does appear at least as if Congress, or at least the Senate, is 
contemplating setting up a specific pot of funds for low emission buses that maybe it would be appropriate to put that as one of our legislative priorities to speak to, to speak to especially the house uh, house about um, generally as we kind of discussed our legislative uh, priority doesn't necessarily go into all of the grant programs that the federal administration um, has but since maybe Congress is interested in this um, maybe we should support it as well it, it seems like a very good item to take to, and I don't recall what the acronym is for the statewide transit advocacy group. Oh, the Florida Public Transit Association? Yeah, it seems like that would be something that yeah. they should certainly advocate for as well. So we're, we, we would speak with our voice at PSTA, but then we would have a statewide advocacy arm so that we could have all the transit agencies pushing for this. Yeah. There are only five, five uh, low or no emission buses operating in the state of Florida today. They're all in Tallahassee, mm. uh, having been funded by this program. Or, actually, not this program, a different program. But, um, so, uh, we do have a Yes, we, we have been joined by our fourth uh, commission member, uh, Commissioner Newton, and we're also joined by another PST board member, uh, Patty Johnson. And if the committee would like to uh, make a motion, to, someone like my motion to add to our federal legislative agenda to support uh, emerging legislation, emerging legislation supporting the no low, low yeah. bus grants. Yeah, and then maybe as we well, did in the past, uh, Harry and the uh, Van Scoyak team will put some meat on the bones of that, uh, uh, some detail, and then uh, I'll email out to you, um, and then we'll present it to the PSA board. And I think what's helpful about that as well is, you know, we'll have a, we'll entertain a motion today, and then as we put more meat on the bones, great, but I think it also helps give us some direction or some ideas for some of our community groups who are advocating this and steering them also in a productive direction where it's one thing to focus on us to buy the buses, but it's also enormously helpful to direct, and they have statewide voices and national voices as well with their organizations to help put some pressure on freeing up the money so that we would be, there's grant money to compete for. I guess so what we really want is for them to have a grant for no low buses in addition to the funding instead of taking it out of the regular yeah. bus purchase yeah. thing. Yeah. I it's mean that's not like thank you but Yeah, thanks no, thank but you. I can only buy half the buses with that. I'd like yeah. to try the electric buses but yeah. This is your thanks. Christmas and birthday present. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> 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 I like this. Um, well um Harry, I don't know if you've heard that, but um, perhaps uh, we, you know, maybe it maybe doesn't have much chance, but maybe our position obviously would be to support uh, the competitive bus program, but separate and distinctly, we support a no low, no emission, low emission bus program, and I would prefer if they didn't come out of the same, uh, yeah. the same set of funding. Okay. Is that unrealistic? I mean, <laughs> probably, but I mean, the, the Senate, the Senate hasn't combined, and the House doesn't have anything, so um, we might as well, I guess, ask for what we really need. It's uh, oh, I'm Carol. sorry, Commissioner Johnson and the Commissioner. The, I, I think some of you may have been at the meeting with Bill Nelson, at the county court, county. Uh, he was talking about the opportunity or the the sequestration, actually, and what's going on. Uh, and he wasn't very optimistic about really expanding very much of, uh, particularly for bus funds. Uh, is that your recollection as well? Yeah, he wasn't very optimistic at all. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. I'm Um, Councilman Newton, um, 
I just think it's a, it's a good idea to be in any pool where there's funds for uh, public transportation. I mean, even if they want to sever it, because that's the way they're heading. That's where the funding's at. So why is swimming just the curve? And I would support um, uh, in any of the pots where they got money that we can get transportation um, dollars for, um, especially uh, replacing capital for, um, equipment like buses, because we're liking that right now. I mean, we not, might not be happy with the way they're splitting it up, but you're still getting it. I mean, it, it could be Christmas and it could be birthday, but you're still getting some funding. And right now, I think we're getting zero for bus replacement. Am I right, Brad? We, 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 uh, we do have some funds for buses, but, but they did zero out the competitive program. So. so do I hear a motion? I would move it. Okay. you got to put the meat on the uh, bones. Right, right. Rachel, did you, were you able to capture? Okay. The motion would be that we would add to our federal legislative agenda for 2015-2016 support for um, designating funds for no e no emission or low emission uh, bus uh, bus program by by Congress. Yeah, but yeah, but it starts in seventeen. Oh yeah, oh right, yeah, yeah it starts in seventeen. So yeah, sure. we would support support that, and then uh, maybe we we would. Uh, maybe we would prefer, I don't know if you do it like a tagline or whatever, yeah. we would prefer to maybe yeah, have separate that, funding, but um, otherwise we support the Senate's position at a minimum. Wouldn't, wouldn't um, can I ask, wouldn't, wouldn't, Hera, wouldn't you, um, wouldn't that be your, your side of, to try to have crap the, uh, the legislation? Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna write the detail. I'm just asking, I don't know if you heard me. Hello? Hello? Okay. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't that be in your wheelhouse to try to help crap that legislation? Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take a, uh, I had drafted something up at Senator Brad, we'll edit it and uh, talk about creating two separate pods so they're not, so the NOLO is not coming out of the competitive bus program. And we'll send that over to Brad to circulate to you all uh, for the board's consideration. And then we'll work, uh, we'll add that to our agenda for your meetings in October. Right. Will there be an alternative to we don't support splitting it? Or some kind of hybrid maybe? Something that we can suggest, because just to say we don't support it and that's what they want to do, I don't think is a good place to be. Is there, I mean, like a plan B, if you will. I know we'd rather keep it the way it is, but if they're looking at right separate, well, okay. yeah, what it's opposing, taking the same money, just designating it, sound like it. Well, we could say we would prefer. Right. We I'm, can I'm just, it I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah. looking at. It. I just want to say no. But I'll leave that. That's that's your wheelhouse. Right. I'll leave it up to you guys up there. Do I hear a second? I saw a second. Oh, did you? I'm oh, sorry. I did. Yeah. Right, right, I did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If, uh, if there's not any more discussion, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And none opposed. Great. I have a question, too, about so if there's a, um, a process maybe coming out in September for last year's money. I think I heard that. I think that's what I heard Harry saying. Yeah. Is there anything that they can do to help with that process as it goes through? I mean, I, I know it's just a grant process, but if there's any way for them to help us with that, because that's a whole separate process than the new legislation. Oh, well, yes. Uh, I mean, that kind of gets back to what we were talking about um, originally, Harry, is that when we are in Washington, Assuming that FTA does issue um, uh, some funds for no low in September, um, and we're there in October, or even if we're not there, um, maybe you can I, uh, identify some ideas on how we might um, make sure we're competitive for, yeah, it would be competitive for that no low funding whenever it becomes um, issued by FTA. Sure. And what we'll do in the meantime, we'll pull the uh, applications for the 10 grants that were awarded in April. Yeah. We can look at those to you so you can take a look at them. It may help you think about how you want to structure your application. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get those to you. There, the way, there were no awards made to Florida, and I think, if I recall, there were no awards in the Southeast. So, um, 
Then to move, thank you very much, Harry. Um, I think we're ready to move on to our state strategy update. And I heard a beep, so I'm not sure if Gray Robinson is still on the line or not. Hello, Fred. Uh, Fred is here. I think Robert, are you on? I'm on as well. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. Good morning as well. So you got all three of us. Fred's oh. time. Good. Right. Great. Well, um, do one of you want to kind of uh, walk us through? the next steps in our state uh, strategy. Uh, uh, yes, sir, Brad, Robert Stewart here. I'll take the first uh, crack at that. And first, uh, for those in the room, let me again congratulate you on Monday's, uh, I think, successful joint executive meeting uh, with the folks from HART. I had the privilege of coming over for that. Uh, and I can tell you again, like I said in that meeting, uh, that it really is a testament to PSTA's leadership and to uh, the, uh, the good working relationship that y'all have been able to establish that something like that can even take place. So I think kudos to your entire organization uh, for your willingness to participate in that and, and to be a leader on it. Uh, I do think regionalism matters. It's talked about a lot in Tallahassee, um, and yet to see it in action is somewhat of a rare thing. And so so good, good on all of you for, for making that happen. Uh, as far as our specific legislative agenda, uh, and mainly the two uh, asks uh, that we're working on for the Central Avenue BRT and the uh, direct service uh, from the airport to Clearwater, uh, the, the strategy uh, remains what it was when we last spoke. Uh, and by the way, Brad, I did hear from Alan Susky today. He's driving through uh, some terrible cell coverage, and he was going to join if he could, but otherwise I'll, I'll bring him up to speed uh, after this uh, call is over. Uh, but uh, in October, uh, it looks like we will have uh, some of you uh, up in, and certainly Brad, up in Tallahassee, where we will um, put in, uh, we'll have the meeting with the Department of Transportation Secretary on the Central Avenue BRT uh, and on the other one, but, but specifically on that. Uh, Senator Brandis has put in that request. As we know, he wants to join us for that meeting, uh, which we think will be very impactful uh, to have him in the room, and that's a project that he now believes in and wants to help with. Uh, we hope to have that happen in October. Uh, the legislature reconvenes for uh, the first committee week of the 2016 cycle in September, uh, actually two weeks from now. Uh, they'll be up in Tallahassee meeting uh, for their committee meeting weeks. Then there are three committee meeting weeks in October, one of which uh, will be a special session, or really two of which will be special sessions to redraw the congressional or the, the uh, Florida Senate maps. Uh, and there will be uh, not only a special session going on, but um, committee weeks surrounding that. Uh, and so we'll be up uh, for all of those and look forward to having PSTA up there for that round of meetings, both with your delegation, uh, with members of leadership, and of course with the Department of Transportation as we work on those priorities uh, from both an executive side, seeking, uh, seeking uh, funding, uh, both operational and capital from the department, uh, and trying to find it that way, and then also working on the legislative side on these topics, as well as uh, the fair box regional priority that we discussed on Monday. Um, so with that, I think that's a quick snapshot of where we are. Fred, Chris, please uh, jump in if I missed anything, and then, of course, Brad, any, any comments or questions that you or the group have there, uh, we're happy to take a stab at. So thank you. Okay. Um, I attended... I am the Vice Chair of the Florida Public Transit Association now and soon to be the Chair of the Transit Association. So the idea of hooking them into a statewide advocacy program uh, so that they would support low and no emission as well, I think I can have some input on that, um, hopefully. And 
Um, I had an opportunity to talk with Ed Coven, who is the state DOT transit director. Uh, I'm not sure exactly that, but he's the top guy of transit in the DOT in Tallahassee. And I told him that we were planning to come and speak to his boss and um, uh, with Senator Brandis, etc. And uh, he thought that was great. I'm sure he'll be there. And um, he suggested that we uh, make sure that we have a meeting in advance with our district secretary, Paul Steinman. And so I, I have asked uh, you guys to maybe set that up. I think it would be great if that meeting locally could also include um, Senator Brandis um, or or his designee, you know, or in some way have the uh, the local folks know that we have this uh, legislative support as well. I think that'll be that'll be important for the secretary and the DOT process that, that they know that the district office is supportive of the project as well. You know, uh, the district office is knowledgeable about. Uh, the project, they know of it, but um, want to make sure that they know that we're, what we're doing, too. So I'm hoping yeah, you guys can help me. And I think, Brad, uh, when we last left that topic, I think Alan had the lead on that, so one of the yeah. things I'll check in with him on is to make sure that that request is in, uh, and we will make sure that meeting happens. Great. I think that would be great. I mean, Ed seemed very, very open to the idea that they would, that he could provide some funding to get that going, and then that way we would not have to have that as a legislative priority, if we're successful this fall with the DOT, then then that comes off our list um, of asks for the for the legislature. Um, Brad, I, I'm just I'm a little confused. Is this a, a different meeting or the same meeting that we were talking about that Brandis would attend, and also possibly Representative Peters? And I think the one when you're thinking of it is the meeting with the Secretary, the Florida Secretary of Transportation, Jim okay. Boxhold, in Tallahassee. Okay. That we're targeting for one of the committee meeting committee weeks in October. Okay. I passed out a legislative uh, timeline here to kind of keep track, and it's and on the front page it says targeted for September. It'll be targeted for October. We don't have that date set yet, but as he said, Senator uh, Brandon has put that request in for October, but. What I'm talking about is a second meeting in advance of that here in locally with the district secretary of um, DOT. His office is over there in Tampa. That, um, that, that seems to make sense because the funding is for the district. And yeah. You have to have them on board instead of just going straight to the top. Yeah. That may look better. So I would concur. Um, uh, this sort of uh, maybe uh, segues a little bit into what I had on the agenda as an action item. Um, but if you look at the schedule, and as we talked with the Hart Executive Committee on Monday, we have a we have a goal of collaborating, speaking with one voice um, to Tallahassee and perhaps even to Washington, D.C., especially with our friends at Hart. And there, there's there's been discussion about, well, could we present a joint legislative agenda, a uh, legislative priority list to state and maybe federal government? Um, we, I think we had very positive discussion with the Hart folks. Uh, those who were there can correct me. But, um, and a general support for that idea, there was discussion about actually both PSTA and Hart jointly presenting to the legislative delegations of Pinellas and Hillsborough County that are listed for September 22nd and 25th. Um, but I think what I would like to get the uh, committee's guidance on is a discussion that we had a little bit on uh, Monday as well, where exactly how should PSCA support the Hart legislative agenda? Obviously, we have our own legislative priorities, and we want to certainly don't want to oppose, uh, we want to be together with Hart, but I've attached a copy of their uh, legislative um, priority list, at least that has gone to their uh, committee. I don't think it's gone to their full board yet, but it has projects uh, on there that uh, wouldn't have nothing to do with Pinellas County uh, or us, just like our, our list has projects that have nothing to do with um, Hillsborough. 
Wouldn't there be a resolution? Or like a resolution of support. Right. I mean, like you said, it's for the first time you saw it, actually regional joint collaboration in action. I think that uh, the symbolic resolution and then vice versa are reciprocal from them to us. They won't affect what they're after. They won't affect us trying to get what we want. Obviously, they're not going to be um, the same unless you look at the regional stuff like the fair box. Fair box is right. in com combination. Right. But I mean, just, just, uh, you know, I think that would be, uh, that's how we normally do it. Or from a council standpoint, just a resolution supporting, you know, like we did with the uh, the ferry. We look at doing the uh, the Bay Ferry from uh, McDill. Oh, yeah. And they come over. We did, the uh, council was the first one to do resolution supporting that. So, in St. Pete. So, I mean, that's my suggestion. I don't know if anybody else has any other. How do you support uh, Hart's uh, legislative abilities? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm a little nervous. I mean, I, I, maybe I could be talked into this, but um, I'd be nervous about committing ourselves to a resolution where we might inadvertently be approving a project that we would be competing with. Um, I think the fact that we are meeting with Hart and we're committed to meeting with Hart on a regular basis and that we are identifying areas where we can collaborate is great, but there may be a lot of areas where we don't because we're, we're kind of like, you know, we're two different transit agencies. We have our own self-interest. So it certainly isn't a hostile um, a motion by any means that we wouldn't sign a, a resolution in support of their agenda, but <coughs> I'm not sure it's necessary. I'm not sure if it really accomplishes anything. If we're trying to show goodwill, we can show goodwill by, you know, we're working together on on the regional fare collection project. We're certainly working collaboratively on federal issues that affect us the same way. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, I think that um, I think that the agencies and other elected officials would be impressed to see that we're very familiar with and cognizant of what Hart's working on with their own BRT projects. I just don't know if we really need to sign a resolution in support or not, but I, I, I could be I convinced would, otherwise. Let, let's go around right. and we'll come back to you. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. You're, you're, on the, you're on the committee. No, I just wanted to hear what our consultants had to say because that's what we pay them for. Yeah. Right, well, let's, let's come to them after we hear from uh, uh, Commissioner the, Johnson. The uh, comment that I heard at the joint meeting from Catherine Egan was that there were three projects that compete were competing for separate funding and that she saw that as being uh, positive. I think it was mm -hmm. the, the fair, col uh, fair collection and then BRT and then is coming from the de department and then uh, the, uh, the legislative request for the Clearwater. And theirs was the fair collection. So it, it sort of sounded to me like those were the three regional priorities. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear her saying that she was seeking our support for these other ones. I mm -hmm. Maybe I missed it. Well, no, they, their committee did discuss uh, supporting our projects, uh, our, our, legislative, our state legislative priorities, including the Central Avenue BRT, Clearwater uh, Bus Rapid Transit, and the um, Regional Fair Collection. Um, and the Commissioner Jaroche, Jaroche, um, that's what she was kind of asking was, well, are you guys going to support our projects? And, you know, if it's in Hillsborough County, why would you support ours and why should we support yours over there? Um, I, I don't want to tie ourselves in knots over this. I, I guess I sort of want to hear from Robert more. I mean, it just seems to me that. Uh, and I wasn't in the joint meeting, so I kind of have to defer to you and the, our chairman as to what we discussed. I mean, it seems to me that we have joint projects that that would it, that would positively impact both transit systems, like the um, regional revenue collection project, for instance, that we're jointly lobbying for. And then we have certain items on our on our list that would that would be projects for. Pinellas, and they have certain items on their list that they're advocating for that would be projects for Hillsborough. I'm not really sure I understand 
you know, obviously our, our advocacy team is going to be talking with the legislature and FDOT about the items on our list. It's not that we're opposed to what Hart is trying to do. There's just we've engaged our advocacy team to advocate for our transit agency. Does that I mean does that make sense? But I, I guess I'm interested in what Robert has to say as well about this, just to make sure. I, I mean I think the perception now that we're having these joint meetings with Hart, we've gotten some terrific press about that and we're finding issues to collaborate on, I think that probably goes a long way. Uh, hey guys, Robert here again. Um, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. What I heard on Monday in the joint meeting uh, is that uh, we were going to have one regional priority uh, that Hart and PSCA would work totally collaboratively on and that is the regional fare box issue. And then to the extent that we were in a position to support the other, uh, the other agency's priorities on other funding matters, we would do that. I, I didn't get the impression what it's worth from Catherine or from, uh, from, from the members of the HART board that they would be passing a resolution in support of our two uh, BRT and, 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 um, uh, and uh, airport project, but just that to the extent they could be supportive, they wanted to do that. Um, so. I, whether or not a resolution makes sense or not, I think I'll leave it to the will of the board, but I'm not sure that I left that meeting under the impression that we had to do one or that we needed to do anything more formal than continue to work together uh, on the regional fare box issue and show the community, show the legislature that these aren't two competing organizations. If anything, they want to be more partner-oriented on places where they can have mutually beneficial um, results for, for the broader community. Okay. Well said. Can I, can I speak now? Or, or you, yes, you please. Now? By all means. Well, where I was coming from was um, kind of like Einstein. You keep doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome. Historically, before uh, Member Rice and Member Diamond came onto the board, we met, joined it with Hart. And it was very adversarial. It wasn't really just meeting with them. We were mandated and funded by the legislator to hold these meetings. Senator Lavalla did that twice. We met with them. And it was very adversarial to the point where they didn't even want a, a letter from T. Barter included in the same envelope to go back with the recommendations of the findings. That's how tedious it was. So what I'm saying is we've always, from the beginning, uh, PSA, we're collaborating on different projects, including purchasing of fuel and other stuff that we get with the hard organization. The legislators already know that. Um, at late, latest last session, if you were there, well, we were there with the Pinellas uh, Beach uh, Chamber organization, Brad, when you and I went up to, to meet the legislators on that. At latest last session, Senator uh, Latvala shared his discontent with what was happening with hard. period. So we always been meeting. All I was saying was, if you do a resolution, mostly a resolution, it's, it's um, how can I say, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's purpose. It's only for the legislative agenda. You're not supporting the organization. You just, it's just, a, um, how can I say, it's just a symbolic, um, um, formal <coughs> um, rec recommendation of support that, that they can see <coughs> in a packet along with the stuff that they're providing to them. So it's, it goes a little bit more than just meetings and, and, and lip service, if you will. Now, it's just a resolution. We don't have to do it. But the stuff you're talking about, we already done. We've been doing it since day one. And as late as last session, we got a comment, Brad. You heard Ms. Senator Latvala about the, the working relationship. And he was all frustrated with the hard situation and the funding of, of both organizations. And, that, and after that, I, I persuaded him to consider the BRT funding because he said it's not in his budget. When I explained to him that that BRT would run by a little thing called Tropicana Field from the beaches, and that St. Pete property didn't have, enough, um, they didn't have enough hotel housing to have all those people there, so we needed a mechanism to get them back and forth. And then he was more open to the idea. So how do we do it? I think more of the same, they already know we're doing that. In fact, uh, some of the brands appropriated funds, so we do meet with them, so that's nothing new. That's where I was coming from with that, so. Um. Before we go to Commissioner Johnson, um, I would offer this thought that if Hart is not doing a resolution in support of our priorities, 
I think it looks silly for us to do it for them. It has to be both of us doing it, and if one partner's not, then I, I think we just need to stick on how we, you know, maybe focus on, on how we work together on the, the regional fair collection in our, in our well, federal policies, which is already happening. Fact, uh, we are in the lead. I mean, I, I talked mm -hmm. to Catherine Egan, the CEO of HART, and she is looking, she, she told me she will still do what we do. Uh, okay. So okay. Good to know. Good to know. On the same issue, the reason I'm here this morning, poking into your meeting, is that, uh, of course, everyone knows that we had a problem with um, legislation last year because PFTA wasn't a part of the discussion for TV. And we know from the meeting on Monday that. Uh, Part doesn't have TD as a part of their budget, as part of their legislative agenda, as part of anything. But we do, and the reason, another reason I'm asking is, on the dates when we're, you know, the 22nd and 25th, do you want me to come up there separately, or to join in with and ask? And that's that's where I'm at. It is legislation. It is PSTA. It's separate, but part of the budget, and it's a big part of this community. Um, that's right. So and, and and so I don't know where we're at. transportation with that. disadvantage funding is part of our our legislative priorities. Um, PSTA is. You're right that part the way the way Hillsborough County is set up. They are not the they they don't have. The, Hart doesn't really have anything to do with transportation disadvantage. They have a separate agency over there called right. Sunshine Line. That I don't know if they do a legislative priority list, but I know they go to Tallahassee and advocate for it as well as we're going to do. Um, I think it, I think it should be part of our certainly their discussions with Senator Latvala when we meet with him because he is his committee is the one that allocates the funding for transportation disadvantage. So. And Most it's part definitely. of our budget, and it's important to him because all of those agencies, yes. Pat knows, are part of his his ask to the community. So, but what was but the point? Um, what where you know you need to direct me. How specifically would you word? Um, if we add this to our. Our priority list. How would you? What, what would your wording be? What's our call to action? It's going to be up to, to this committee. Well, I what, think what you're, you're, what what I that we had to this year increase by 15 percent. What every budget, part you part, neighborly senior, everybody that serves the transportation disadvantage, we had to give everybody a 15% increase. And that's not a good thing. We don't want to do that. We would like to encourage uh, the legislature to look at this and tell us to decrease it because we're going to give you a bunch more money. That's right. In other words, that $5 million that we missed out on, we could have used that in our budget. It didn't go there. It should have gone here. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, increasing transportation disadvantage funds statewide, so that Pinellas County increases that that then flows down to Pinellas County and PSCA is already part of our adopted state legislative agenda for next year. Now, just like we talked about with the federal government, there's a strategy. There's a strategy on how we can be most effective in getting the legislature and the state and the governor to agree to that that we that we are pursuing. We can we already have a number of different strategies. Talking directly to the the chairman of the committee that appropriates the fund, that's Senator Latvala, participating in the Transportation Disadvantage Day in Tallahassee with our fellow community transportation coordinators around the state. Maybe having a meeting with the Commission for Transportation Disadvantage to talk to them and maybe 
be a little bit critical of their unwillingness to take the $5 million in excess funds that they didn't spend down in Miami-Dade and Broward and maybe reallocate it to other places that needed it. You know, that was last year. I did talk to them already. They said there's nothing they can do about it. But, um, you know, there's a lot of things we uh, that are in place that we can do. And, you know, we just got to keep pushing it as best we can. Chairman Rice, I, I can come up with, even in the, the explanation, the state ex, um, explanation for what TV is, it will show you how much it saves each community to have this program, um, how many trips it takes, how important it is. I don't think we have to tell everybody that, but I can if you want that put together. Well, certainly I hope you'll join me in Tallahassee. Oh, or I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> but what I'm saying yeah. is, is we are you asking me for that kind of how much we're saving, what we're doing for the community. Are you asking for that? Uh, I'm not asking you to do it, but I'm just asking what can we help direct staff to produce to help move this ball forward. So if it's uh, some type of fact sheet that we can put together that we can include when we write letters to agencies, elected officials, something to have in hand. Oh yeah, I'm sure all the facts are out there, oh, but yeah. kind of put it together succinctly, and then deliver it on PSTA letterhead. And um, and it sounds like we have already begun a lot of those communications, but we also need to get these actions into our reporting process so that the rest of the board is aware of how we're tracking this issue. Okay. Commissioner Johnson. I'm, I'm just Chairman. looking at the uh, board package from the last meeting, and we have a memo in there from Gray Robinson on 2016 regular session strategy overview. I do not see it, see the TD in this memo. Well, is that? I, I guess that brings another question in terms of the, the priority setting process. There are some actions that come up that it's certainly within our purview and our mission to address as a matter of course. I tend to see you know, these priorities that we've put together as an additional commitment of additional resources and where we've asked our lobbying team to put extra effort to get sharper elbows to compete for scarce funds. It's not that we're doing this to the exclusion of any other business items, but my question is, my, impre my impression was that this is these priorities are what we're directing Gray Robinson to focus on. Uh, we're not giving them a laundry list of, of issues. Does that make sense? Yes. But, um, but I'm hearing from you that you'd like us to put um, our, our thumb on the scale with a little more, a little more oomph. You're right. <laughs> and I recommend that we do that by Putting to, can we put together some better communications and track what our start with the letters, reporting uh, opportunities to speak at the Pinellas delegation? Yes. We can start with that set of tactics and then we can look to see what we need to do to increase more pressure and shine a bright light on this. Because I agree, it's very troubling. What I, I, I hear what you're upset about and I Governor Scott feel your pain. Governor Scott doing his um, employment and this is where workforce and all of those places come to us and say, I can get them a job if I can get them there. And we're the only way to get them there. We're it. And we fill that, <coughs> that uh, part of the whole state's pressure. Okay. Uh, Chairman Johnson? The, the thought I had is that I should be able to find one document that has all of our legislative, at least the, the things that we want to advance. Now, of course, we've got other things that we respond to. And I just was looking for that document that would have TV in it. I think the story at the joint legislative at the delegation meeting, we've doubled the number of TV 
passes that we put out. Uh, we we are getting to the point where we may have to restrict the number that we can we need additional. Just, just back to the point at hand, <coughs> to give um, Ray Robinson and, and Skonski a, a, a better, <coughs> I guess, I guess more ammunition as they represent PSCA, um, I would uh, move that we do a resolution uh, supporting Hart's legislative agendas, um, specifically their 2016 uh, top legislative agendas, since we're in the lead and, and they'll reciprocate them, I'm sure. <coughs> And Chairman, I, I have a thought I just want to share with Commissioner Newton before we entertain the motion. And my thought is, I, I'm open to the idea of doing a resolution, but I think it should be sort of orchestrated, like you suggested. And I think we should do it, I think we should do it, I mean, here's, here's my thought. I think we should do it if our lobbying team talks to the Hart lobbying team and Brad talks with Catherine Egan and they and they think they come back to us with a recommendation that hey we like this idea the resolution supporting each other's priorities you know that will that will be as councilman newton said a symbolic gesture mm -hmm. my only concern with doing it today is i don't want us to do it just us having had this discussion from on the committee without it being sort of behind the scenes coordinated i don't want it to flop in other yeah. words, I don't want us to set out a resolution and then Hart for some reason not to do a reciprocal resolution and it and the story to be something along the lines of, you know, they can't get along again. You know, yeah. and it, but it, you know, and I know that sounds like a silly thing, but given like the history here, I I just want to make sure it's it's perfectly orchestrated. And I like the idea of some sort of symbolic gesture that we are working together and maybe we could get another positive story out of it just from passing the resolution. So that, that's my only thought. Well, if, if, if you will, since we're in the Catbird seat and we're leading, I would just uh, give back Brad off. Well, we could pass a, a, a motion for resolution giving Brad the, op the option to communicate with her and see what she reciprocated and then go forward. Because right. all we're doing is make a recognition. I, that's forward. already happening, right? Yeah. Uh, I like I mean, the subject happening. to them. Through. So you so you so you working on a resolution for them to support the uh, support the legislative agenda? Yeah. Okay, because I, I didn't hear that. I wouldn't have made the motion. If it I mean, I think if we could get some, I mean, if we could get some comfort from Brad or some further communication from Brad that he will follow up and bring that back to us, you know, as yeah. a sort of completed package. I like the the concept. I just don't want it to somehow I understand. backfire. I understand. <laughs> well, 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 proceed. What has happened in in the past? In, in and like I said, just as late as last session, it's, it's always been a turmoil with either perceived or real with Hart and PSCA. Uh, and and, and, what, and what, what I was only <coughs> going to do was not do the same thing this session. And I, the opportunity and I, to, you know, and I agree with that. And I like that because I heard that too. We have Paul Steinman come to the St. Petersburg Chamber, and that was his message to us was, you know, the reason we are having problems finding, you know, resources to allocate to District 7 is because, you know, Hillsborough and Pinellas can't get along. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I tend to think that that is some excuse making by people in Tallahassee who don't really want to be, you know, supporting us anyway. So I, I like the idea. I just want to make sure it's orchestrated and, and you know, you can talk with Ms. Egan and make sure that... I, I know Brad would, but they got a new uh, head over there, which is different from when we were doing our joint meeting and Patty was there. Pat was there. Um, but the grasp the opportunity as a legislator, if I'm sitting there looking at two regional transit organizations and I see them working, I know, that, I know they're meeting because we gave them money and, and made them go to the table with me. In fact, Sitting in the last sat in on the last meeting with the funding. If you remember that, it was right here and it was downstairs. Okay, so what I'm saying is, if I see, a, I'm looking through this stuff, I see a resolution where they support them, I'm saying, wow, this is, this never saw this before. This is huge. This is more than just, you know, we're meeting and we're doing meetings and we're doing the best we can. Now, will it do anything? Probably not. It's a resolution on paper, but the, the, like you said, if we get a good story out of it or if it, if it moves them one way or the other to, 
to try to fund because here's a collaboration where they are working together. Just like when we were out with Greenlight, we went out to get every um, municipality to try to support that project. It didn't look good going with just two or three when you got all these municipalities around in Pinellas County who's going to benefit from it, and we need to get them all in line. So uh, it's just a suggestion. I mean, but if, he, if Brad can go back and solidify uh, uh, a, a reciprocal commitment from their head, I'm, I'm cool. I mean, but if he's already doing it, I'm cool too, but I think it needs to be done. Because believe me, it was, it's always been that way. And up from up high, all they see is what they get. And if we can't put a recommendation from T. Bard or a letter supporting what we're doing and, and, and the findings that we got as a, as a group meet together with heart, I mean, what does that say to the people up high who's issuing out the money? That's all. So. I can just, if I can just uh, and I and I also just before you get started, but I just want to say I I don't want the the last few minutes of this conversation to be disembodied of the of the positive steps forward and just a meeting just this week we've had with PST and Hart right. the executive. I mean, I mean we could go back and pick those scabs of when we didn't get along, but we've had two recent meetings chaired by our chairman Bill Johnson. Um, that have been enormously successful, which have already captured positive press. So, I mean, the narrative is shifting. Uh, we're not exactly back in that stuck place where we were when Latvala kind of brought us under force to uh, consider consolidating. We're, we're meeting voluntarily and productively. That's right. And we don't need to pass a resolution for for um, Brad to have conversations with Catherine because you're already talking. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not talking about conversations. We got it. Can we, can we hear Mr. Miller, please? Mr. Miller is being recognized to speak on the floor. Oh, so, so you, uh, um, you're misspeaking my words. I, yeah, I think both of you are correct, and um, it is important, like, as you say, to, I, well, I think the board, both boards want to do things symbolically to show that uh, things are different. Things have changed since the times in the past, clearly. That's why I have a plan, and I'm going to very much hope that some of you come with me over to um, Columbus Drive in Tampa to stand up before the Hillsborough delegation in some way um, in support, um, you know, on September 25th. And then hopefully Mike Suarez or Catherine or whoever from Hillsborough will come over to Pinellas. That will be a huge, I think, symbolic gesture that we are standing together. What we don't want to happen is either at either separate at these local delegation meetings or in Tallahassee, I get up there and ask for PRT funding and then Catherine gets up there second and asks for the same money for a competing project. That's what, you know, um, we're trying to just change that, and it's it's more symbolic than anything, because we are two trans systems. But um, I don't think a resolution is ne is necessary. Um, but you know, it it would be something additional besides just standing together, and you know, in front of, in front of them, or having joint meetings. I it's just an idea. Yeah. Did we hear a second for the motion? Well, I think that uh, I'm, not, I'm not seconding the motion, but I think my comments were to see if, you know, and I and I I like the concept, and I yeah, think my, my comments were to see if Brad could orchestrate it with Catherine and bring it back to our next meeting so that we could then entertain the motion. I, I think and that's so a great way to go forward. I think yeah. Council Member Newton brought up some really good points. We do want to make sure that we're proceeding aware of the nuances and being smart and strategic about this. And I, I think between the two of you, we've got ideas on the table to keep this moving forward. Go ahead. Madam Chair, um, and, 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 um, and Madam Clerk, I don't know if you do actionary minutes or when we vote or something, do you catch everything as far as the motion? I'm asking because in, in St. Pete, they only take minutes on stuff we actually vote on. Like the motion that they're just, they're, they're just that, that they didn't get, didn't get seconded. Do you take minutes on that? This procedure? Yeah. You do? Okay. Well, Brad, I, I will be there. I've been to every single meeting in, in Tampa. When, I mean, if no one else came, you and I were sitting there in front of heart. 
and, and those individuals, I'll be there. And then when they go to Tallahassee, I'll be there too. It's important. Um, what I'm trying to arm you with and our, our joint body, legislative body, and this momentum that we have is more tools than just the same stuff we had last session. There was nothing in print showing the co collaboration with PSCA and our. So that was the intention. And I guess procedurally, what I might suggest is, I mean, since Council Member Newton raised the issue of the minutes, I mean, one, one suggestion that, that you could entertain would be the idea of continuing his motion, as opposed to failing, because I don't think any of us want that motion to fail. Well, I think in a second, so it fails, right? Well, that's why I'm suggesting, I mean, procedurally, I would support the motion knowing that it was something that was needed and was recommended by staff. And so, I mean, if the motion were continued to the next meeting, that that might be a way to... It's not to really a motion unless it gets seconded. Okay. I mean, it's not really an okay. actionable okay. thing. Okay. Okay. Well, then I'm speeding ahead of order. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the minutes will, ref will reflect that this the will discussion. continue as a discussion okay. to bring back on our Good. agenda next time. Good. Okay. Great. In, the, in the spirit of carrying forward the suggestions right. put forth by Councilmember Newton. Good. All right. Okay. Um, anything else on straight, no, state strategy? Say that really fast. Okay. Um, thank you, Fred. Are you still on the line? Uh, Robert's still here. Hey, Robert. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for your time and your report. We look forward to hearing from you next time and seeing you at our, our some of our next few meetings. Yes, looking forward to it. See you all soon. Great. Thank you. Um, that, let's head back to our action item. Uh, now that we have quorum, we can look at the minutes and I'll hear comments, suggestions, or uh, a motion to accept the, the minutes. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Minutes um, accepted. Thank you. And um, you will notice in your packet we have a pretty thorough list of meetings coming up in the next couple of months for our future meeting subjects. Are there any questions about that or uh, questions about the next time our legislative committee meets? Seeing none. Are, uh, these, are, are these prime dates? Some of them are weak of, right? Uh, Targeted and... No, but the idea would be that we would go to Tallahassee once, one of those October um, weeks. Um, not, not all of them. But probably the week of October 19th. Um, yeah, like, uh, my understanding is Senator Brandis has put in an official request to meet with the Secretary of Transportation and in, during one of the listed of weeks in October. So once that gets locked down, I think that will pretty much set the week to go. Okay. Chairman Rice. Yes. May I ask that that two D be included? Yes. Yes. Most well, definitely. I have an action item on my agenda on my to do list here to develop a transportation disadvantage fact sheet, just like these other ones. That uh, we will, that, is, that way we can speak to it when we're up there or talking to Senator Labala and and we, and we will develop a strategy just like we did for the our other our, our primary projects um, of how we intend to get additional funding support. I, I would be delighted to go go with, be part of whatever. Right. And and okay. perhaps in fact I promised the uh, T D community, is that the way to say it's out? Um, that I would do so in right. their interest. Great. And again, okay. we're scheduled to um, participate in first ever combined Florida Public Transit Day ever in Tallahassee and uh, piggybacking on top of a long standing Transportation Disadvantage Day in January when the session is already underway. Um, I will let me investigate whether or not it makes it helps or it doesn't help. I'm not sure if a uh, meeting with the the um, I don't know the executive director of the Commission for Transportation Disadvantage um, is worth going up there or not. I mean, I I talk to him on the phone all the time. I have okay. told him we are very upset. We didn't get more money. I mean, um, 
he knows. He felt like it's really the legislature's, you know. And we know different, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, with no further comments, and we're done with the agenda, we'll, we will officially adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Rachel, right, so could you give these to my AA, these dates, if you already did it? We will. Could you we give will. these dates to my AA on this sheet? Judy? Thank you. Sorry. Oh, okay. It only took me a little bit. Probably. If I I thought that might be reasonable. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah